Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Flossy Podcast. My name is Claire. I'm a maker, I'm a designer, I like to make and design things and then I come on here and share them with you and you very kindly let me ramble on across the magic that is the interwebs. Um, I'm very excited that you're here with me today. Uh, if you're new, this is basically where you expect me sat down and rambling on to you. Um, but if you are returning, thank you so much. It's so nice of you to keep coming back and listen to me ramble on about my knitting. And I'm super happy that you're all here. And I'm particularly excited to be recording this podcast episode because it's been a while. Um, and that leads me to, I want to start this episode off with a really big thank you because I was recently in the UK, um, which some of you may know. I was there for five and a half weeks, which meant that trying to record the usual podcast, it was not going to happen. It was so busy and I thought that before I went and as soon as I got there, I knew I made the right decision because it was so busy. Um, I barely paused for breath. It was, I'd not been home in over two and a half years, it was nearly three years, and you know, because of the COVID. Um, so there was just so many friends and family to see, there was a wedding in the middle of it all, it was just non-stop. Um, so I was right, because <laughs> originally I was like, should I take my recording equipment with me? No, it would not have worked. And um, so while I was there, I queued up two videos, um, which were a little bit different to my usual content. One was a project-based video, and the other one was me, kind of very similar to what I do here, rambling on about my favorite makes. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous because it's new types of content. I didn't know if you'd like it. Um, and I got so many lovely comments and so many kind words and watched them and it was just really lovely so I want to say a big thank you for that it's actually got me really excited to do more of those kind of videos my brain's been ticking away of other kind of project-based videos I could share with you that I'm excited to work on so watch this space I've um I've got lots of plans for over the summer and I'm really excited to do them all and really excited that I'm back to having <laughs> some knitting time because like I said, while I was in the UK, it was just super busy. Um, I had my trusty Merrymaker with me, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. Um, but honestly, even just to find time for a couple of rounds on that was kind of tricky, but I did manage to do a little bit. Um, and we're gonna chat about that first, I think. But yeah, before we dive into it, a huge thank you. Um, Really, I really appreciated each and every comment that you sent. And and yeah, I'm just really excited to dive in and do some more videos over the summer and hopefully get outside a little bit. I've had a few ideas of things I could do outdoors too because the weather's gone really nice, um, a little humid and buggy. But, um, but yeah, it's lovely out there. Everything's growing. So, so yeah, those are some future plans. But for right now, let's take a quick look at my merrymaker um <laughs> you probably noticed if you watched the last podcast episode it is is a little smaller than um than when you saw it last and that's because as i mentioned in that episode i did end up ripping back um what had happened is i knit the entire body and i tried it on and i found there was a lot of um there was an okay amount of ease in the bust but there was a lot of positive ease in the upper arm um, and I just it just wasn't fitting exactly how I wanted it to um, I would prefer a little less in the arms and more in the bust um, so yeah I kind of I went back and forth I tried it on quite a few times and um, before I made the decision but in the end I thought I'd rather know that it's going to fit and I'm going to be really happy with it than just carrying it on and just hoping I could like, because it never works to try and block out a bit more ease in the bust, not for me anyway. Um, and I didn't want the upper arms to be too bulky. So, so what I ended up doing is I ripped right back to where I separated for the sleeve and the bust and I just redistributed those stitches. I 
took less out of the upper arm and I put more into the bust. And so far, that's working really well. And honestly, I'm not mad that I had to rip back. Um, the, so the contrasting color I'm using for the color work section is this gorgeous, it's called Elum Red, but it's like this, this corally pinky color and it's beautiful. Um, but it is a brushed alpaca. <laughs> And it was a pain to rip back, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Luckily I only had three stripes of the colour work that I had to rip back um, and it's such a lovely yarn so I'm gonna forgive it. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. I paired it with a BFL Masham blend uh, that was originally from the Hollyhock Fibre Co and I think they're out of, um, they've stopped trading now. Um, but I think you can get that blend from some other dyers and it's lovely to work with and I just love this combination I went stash diving for it um, and yeah I have slowed up on knitting on it a little bit just because the weather's got so warm and humid but it's perfect for um, in between other projects because at the moment I'm doing quite a lot of design work and I'm doing a lot of math and some of my sample knitting I'm doing is a little bit more complicated <laughs> so this has been really nice because I can literally just pick it up and put it down without having to think about it much at all because I have this the color work section is now just in my brain because it's really simple um so yeah that's the update on my merrymaker this is from issue seven of making stories magazine and it was designed by Jill Thompson Beach and it's gorgeous I highly recommend it if you have that issue or if you haven't got an issue go and check it out because it's beautiful um, so yeah that is my merry maker um, one of the other things I've been doing this past week is updating one of my older patterns so the first shawl pattern actually I don't think it was the very first shawl pattern it's one of my early shawl patterns um, and it's this one it's fettled uh, I think I did it back in 2018 and it's this, it's very long, it's a crescent shawl um, and it's made up of, the body has all these, this lovely texture, it's all twisted stitches and it makes up this lovely lattice texture and then it's edged with um, just this little border of knot stitches and a little bit of garter in there and I really like this style of shawl I'm not really a big shawl wearing person I guess um, I find triangle shawls sometimes unless they're really big which you know I like a big shawl um, if you've seen me bang on about Heareth uh, which is my shawl that I did by Liner magazine um, that is a huge shawl and again this is a really big shawl um, but the thing I like about a crescent shawl is you can kind of have it as more of a traditional shawl also you can use it as like a scarf and kind of just wrap it all up and I like that kind of shawl it's not going to fall off and I can get it really cozy around my neck and, um, and I think if you like more of a scarf style if you like scarves but then find actually knitting scarves can be a little bit boring sometimes because they are just back and forth um crescent shawls are a really good way to do it uh i find them really enjoyable to knit but but yeah but they do make for really long rows as well so i can kind of see why people won't like them as well this one yeah this one the rows get super long I'm not gonna lie if you don't like purling really long rows you have long rows of pearls so if that's the case it might not be your cup of tea but I love it and I was wearing it the other day and I thought I should really revisit that pattern and just make sure because it's been so long since I've wrote it just make sure it's all nice and cleaned up and I put it in my um, my new layout or my latest layout and just tied up some of the the wording in there and how I did the repeats and things so nothing about the actual pattern has changed at all it was originally tech edited and test knit and 
and I think it's lovely for summer. So this is, it comes in two sizes. This is the biggest size. So there is a smaller size if you're looking at this. And once again, saying, Claire, your scarves are too big or your shawls are too big. Um, there is a, um, a smaller version in that pattern too. And I originally knit this. So this was a collaboration I did with Blacker Yarns in the UK. And this is the Lioness, I think you pronounce it as. It's the linen and wool blend. And that if you haven't tried linen yarns before, that's a really good one because it's a linen and wool blend. Uh, you kind of get the best of both worlds. And when you're first working with it, it feels, it does feel very crisp. Um, but as you go along, and especially after you wear it a lot, I mean, look at the drape on it. It gets softer and softer. And yeah, this is one of my favorite things to throw around my neck and cuddle up to it. Um, so I thought it was high time that Fettled, did I say its name? Fettled, um, had a little spring clean. And it's been lovely revisiting the pattern. So much so that while I was doing it, I was like, I'm gonna knit another version. And despite what I just said about it being really warm here, I decided to knit a heavier weight version because like I said, it's in two sizes. Um, and it got me thinking, cause it is kind of, I mean, it's a crescent shawl, but it also makes me, I think it's so versatile, this style, to have it more as a scarf that I thought it might be really nice to have like a winter version one. And because there are two sizes, you can very easily knit the smaller size in a heavier weight yarn. At least that's what my brain thinks. Um, and do whatever yarn you've got from your stash, it's gonna be great for stash diving too. So because before I actually say 100%, you should definitely do that, I want to test it out. So I cast on another fettled, um, but this time using Dererum Natura's Julia, I'm, I'm butchering that, Julia. The gorgeous, um, it's a worsted weight yarn and it's French Merino. I'm sure you've heard of this yarn before. I probably banged on about it before because it's gorgeous. Um, and it has, for a woolen spun yarn, it has really good stitch definition. So I popped it straight on my needles. <laughs> I've been obsessed with knitting it ever since because it's really relaxing because you get into a really nice groove with, um, with the twisted stitches and then the reverse side is just all purling. So it's been really lovely. Although I was sat outside the other day and it got to like 28 degrees and I was knitting with this and my hands were just getting hotter and hotter, but I still had a nice time, so it was fine. Um, but yeah, I've been having a really nice time knitting on this um, because it's still really light at the moment because I'm just at the beginning. Um, it's been nice just pick up and put down again too. Uh, but what I should cover is if you've never knit a crescent shawl before, the construction is actually really straightforward. Um, I started with a garter tab cast on like you would with a lot of shawls and that's where you cast on two stitches and you knit from like back and forth for so many rows but then you pick up the stitches along the pearl bumps um, and in the cast on stitches. So what you end up with is where you're gonna knit back and forth from, you've kind of got this little section of um, that first piece of knitting becomes very center of it. And it gives you like this lovely base to then increase off. Um, and then when you've got that, you, for a crescent shawl, because you are um, increasing very quickly um, to get this length. Uh, you increase on every side on both ends, if I'm explaining that correctly. <laughs> if, if you follow a crescent shawl pattern, you'll very quickly see, I'm probably not explaining that super well. Um, but the only complicated thing that it might feel complicated at first, but once you get into the groove of it, it's, it's absolutely fine is you create a yarn over before you increase and then you drop that yarn over on every every time you do a new row. And what that does is it creates 
more like a little bit more ease along the side because you are increasing really quickly so for this pattern um, I have you increasing um, two stitches on either side on every row so that's four stitches per row and that's on every right side and wrong side row so you increase it very quickly and it can make this edge really really tight so by doing a yarn over um, and then what happens is when you get to the other to the yarn over you drop it and then you yarn over again and it just creates um, a lot more um, ease I guess it's not as tight along that row so because if you don't do that and you increase very quickly then you can end up with that whole all this row here just feels really tight and that's not as nice and it'll bunch up and you won't be able to get that same drape at the end of the day so if I've explained that <laughs> in a really confusing way just just pop um pop a comment below and I'll, I'm sure I can find a video or something that explains that whole thing um, but as I said it sounds more confusing as I try and explain it when you're actually knitting a crescent shawl and if that technique is in um, the pattern like it is for mine um, for Fettled um, you very soon get into that routine and it, it's actually really straightforward so if um, if you've never knit a crescent shawl before I highly recommend you give it a go especially if can you like me and you've tried shawls before I'm not good at those little one skein shawls that it's not too bad if they're like a crescent and they're more of like a little mini scarf but I tend to like they slip off my shoulders a lot I probably move around too much um crescent shawls are really good because they are more they feel more like a scarf I guess so they're very easy to kind of like throw around your neck um or like I said you can wear this if they're big enough too you can definitely wear it more like a traditional shawl and do the whole tie in the back thing which is kind of nice and I've seen people do that too um, and that keeps it on but, but yeah I just really like it it's a nice one to work on in the summer especially if you've got like a nice linen yarn that you want to try out and it's nice if you want something with like good stitch definition then give it a look I put the um I'll put the link below um this afternoon I'm going to go out and try and get some new photos of it um I think I'm going to be updating it hopefully by Friday when this episode goes out um it will be updated by then if not if you go on and it it's the old photos um just just give it a day or two you can also sign up for my newsletter because as soon as it's updated I'll be sending out a little update notice in there too and and yeah it's been really nice I actually have a really nice time revisiting my old patterns because you do tend to I don't know sometimes you get a little bit wrapped up or at least I can in oh I need to do something new I need to get something new um everyone's putting out these new patterns and you can get like a little bit wrapped up and really I've got older patterns that need a little sprucing you know it's been a little while and um, it's kind of go back to those because I also kind of end up with a bit other ideas basically from those um because I don't know each design's kind of like a little time stamp I always feel like when I go back and revisit them I kind of remember what was going on then while I why I was designing that and sometimes it's kind of nice because it gives me a little confidence boost to see that I've actually developed a bit as a designer when I look at my older patterns and I can see you know how I've improved in certain parts which is always nice to give yourself a little bit of a confidence boost <laughs> that might just be me though um so yeah I really enjoyed working on that and I'm looking forward to continuing with this I have some shocker yellow yarn left over um in uh, oh, of course because I showed you my watershed scarf before um, that I knit in uh, Jerome Natura Julia Julia um, in that gorgeous yellow color so I think I'm going to do where I've got the cream trim here we're going for the grello and I'm going to do it in the yellow so so I can't wait to do that and then I'm going to have a nice exciting shawl scarf to wear when it comes to autumn so Yay!
So for my knitting, that's all I can actually show you uh, right now. Because like I said, all the other things I've been working on are secret at the moment, um, which is super exciting, but I always <laughs> want to tell you what I've been knitting. So I can't wait to be able to share those with you um, in a few months time. But I do have some sewing plans that I want to share with you. Uh, I actually hoped I'd be further along with this. I have plans of starting this project on the weekend, but I normally sew, sew in the basement and I normally work in the basement. I've got like my little desk all set up down there, but it's been so cold down there because it's got really hot here, but we, our basement, you can get outside, but it's just the, the one door. So there's not a ton of natural light that comes through there and it's quite chilly and you can't put the heating on because the stairs are all open anyway it's like a whole thing um which means I have to leave the heating off down there so it doesn't get any hotter up here so it just means the base was freezing at this time of year so which is why I brought my computer up and I didn't really have anywhere to set my sewing machine up here so I decided this weekend to focus on my knitting things and I didn't do any sewing but I wanted to share with you my plans because I bought myself a new pattern and I printed it all out and I got it ready to go and it's a shirt pattern. It is the Meliot shirt from uh, Deer and Doe so any sewers out there might already know about this pattern. Um, it's a beautiful shirt slash blouse I guess uh, and I'm very purposely got for it because as you know, I'm a newbie sewer when it comes to doing clothing. So sleeves are a little bit, especially when it comes to shirts and stuff. Um, I managed to do the sleeves on my CeeLo top um, pretty well, uh, but I kind of wanted to give myself a little break from sleeves next. And that's why I decided to go with this pattern because it's basically just a cuff sleeve you don't have to do a separate one I guess it's like a dolman sleeve in terms of uh, knitting I don't know if that translates across to sewing so please let me know if that's the right term for that um, and I've got some I've not done the muslin yet so that's what I was going to do this weekend so I'm going to do a practice run first because the fabric I've got to make the final one I've had in my fabric stash for ages because <laughs> I was too scared to do anything with it because I really love it it's um it I'm sure um knitters out there you know who Katie Green is um but if you don't um Katie Green is a fantastic illustrator um she's based in the UK I was really lucky to meet her um, when she worked at Blacker Yarns um, a couple of years ago I went down and picked up some yarn from them and she's just a lovely 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 person um, and a fantastic illustrator and she had her own fabric printed uh, she still sells it I think in her Etsy shop but when she first started doing it I um, I purchased this from her um, with, uh, with some birthday money because I'm 12 uh, but this is the British, I think it's called British Sheep Breed print. And this is all of her illustrations of gorgeous British sheep. <laughs> it's so lovely. Um, I think this was the cotton sateen one. It's got a lovely smooth feel to it. And it's going to make a really soft, lovely shirt. And I'm hoping since my first project that I did, my CeeLo top, I used double gauze, <laughs> which was tricky. Um, I'm hoping this will be a bit easier to sew with. And I just really don't want to mess it up either. Um, I want to make sure that I don't wreck the fabric. So I'm going to do a practice from first. And then once I'm confident enough to go with this fabric, I'm going to make myself a sheepy top. I am so excited about it, but I'm not going to lie, it's one of those things where I've been, I keep putting off starting it because I'm worried about chuffing it up, basically. <laughs> so, so yeah, but I cut out the pattern, we'll start with a practice run and we'll take it from there because I've never done um, 
collars or anything like that and that pattern that I picked has has a bunch of options it has just like a mandarin style collar uh, but I would I would really like like a little like a proper collar to it if I'm not doing the sleeve <laughs> I'm not doing any satin sleeves I think I should attempt a collar so so yeah that's what I'm gonna do hopefully when I speak to you next I'll have got my courage up and made a start on it and at least have my muslin done to be able to show you how that's looking um but yeah I'm really excited I'm I'm hoping that the basement warms up a little more soon if not I'm gonna have to work out another table to bring up here and set my sewing machine up because I am I'm excited to start it so so yeah those are my sewing plans and I'm just really happy with everything I've got on my needles. It was it was lovely being home um, in England, but I was starting to um, miss making, having the making time. Um, but it was also, I think next time I'm over, it'll be a lot more relaxed because there was just so many people to see after such a long time. Um, you know, some of my relatives haven't been very well. I wanted to make sure I'd seen them. Um, one of my closest friends was having a baby, so I wanted to get down and see her in the Cotswolds. And my best friends got married, <laughs> so it was just like this whole whirlwind of a trip. So next time I'm there, I'm sure it'll be a lot calmer, and um, and I can't wait to go back to be honest, because I miss everyone tons. But I had a very warm welcome when I got back here because Chris and Tilly were waiting for me and Tilly even though she's not around right now she's got a little camera shy and she's basking in a sun patch outside um she's been like a little cling film ever since I've got back <laughs> and there have been lots of puppy snuggles happening so it's been lovely to get back home to them too so but yeah so that's the podcast for today I really hope you enjoyed it um if you want to keep up with me, I've been horrendous on Instagram lately, <laughs> but I'm going to be diving back into there. So if you want to keep up with me in between episodes, you can find me there. Um, you can also subscribe to my newsletter. I pop the link below for that too. And, and yeah, and hit like and subscribe <laughs> if you want to. There's no pressure. And I will see you in the next podcast episode. Bye. Hope you're well and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.